And after a year, we were ready to get in our T-38 jets, fly down to Cape Canaveral. And the night before launch, they light up the vehicle. There was actually a total eclipse of the moon that night, which was uh, kind of a nice omen. And, um, and then we're on our way. So um, the critical thing that we were dealing with, uh, in addition to what we had to do, was the tools that we would be using to get the job done. Just like any uh, person working in a, in a wood or metal shop, uh, the quality of your tools is absolutely critical. And we had incredible support for the people who provided us with tools on Hubble. Remember, this was such a critical mission. Uh, you know, very often, um, you know, you're given a set of tools and then you have to work with what, what you have. But being Hubble, just as an example, I could say one day in the water tank, oh, you know, um, if this uh, wrench had just a little bit more of an angle on it, I'd have an easier time getting access to that bolt. And sure enough, I'd come back to the water tank a week later and there would be this new tool because it was Hubble. And that was one of the great things about working on this mission that everybody in NASA, all the contractors, all over, I mean, all that people could think of was we've got to make this mission work. And so, in many cases, uh, changes that we would recommend, even fairly close to the, um, uh, the, the mission, uh, we could do. As an example, the original plan with these tools, we were going to have them in a toolbox outside in the cargo bay of the shuttle. And every day, we would go out uh, with an empty tool carrier on our spacesuits. We'd go out to the toolbox, we'd load up all the tools, and then we'd go to work. And then at the end of our workday, we'd go back, put all the tools in the toolbox, and come back inside with an empty tool carrier. You know, it, it occurred to us after a while, if we could have all the tools inside the shuttle, we could save, you know, a half an hour for every spacewalk. And that could turn out to be critical. Normally, they would say, oh, no, it's too late. We've done all the weight and balance, and, and no, you just deal with it. But no, this was Hubble, and sure enough, the tools were brought inside, and there I am just before going outside, and, and you can see the tool carry and all those tools that we were able to arrange and get set, and, and so we really did uh, save the time. So it, it was an incredible experience working on this. What I'm going to do now is uh, show you a video of the actual mission, and I have to apologize, it's not the high-definition videos which NASA comes back with from the space station now, uh, it's the old-fashioned camera, but I think it'll give you a good idea of what we actually did up there. There's an artist's model of the Hubble Space Telescope. And here is our crew patch. Actually, we all often joke designing the patch is one of the hardest parts of being a crew. Uh, we launched at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you have to launch right after Hubble flies over. And we went out up to the uh, highest orbit that the shuttle ever, ever goes, uh, about 600 kilometers. Uh, here we are getting all of our EVA equipment and tools ready to go. Wherever possible, we use power tools. They save time and they save wear and tear on your wrists. The job of the uh, two pilots was to uh, find Hubble and rendezvous with it. And it's very exciting. You know, when you first see it, it's just a little speck of light, and then it gets bigger and bigger as you get closer. And finally, uh, our uh, op re remote manipulator arm operator was able to grab it and, and we latched it down and got ready for work. Here we are getting uh, ready to uh, go out on the first day of spacewalking, putting on radiation monitors, heart monitors, in the suit doing our uh, pre-breathe before uh, going out to denitrogenate our blood. And here I am coming out on the very first spacewalk of the Hubble rescue mission, STS-61, in December of 1993. I was riding on the robotic arm that day, and my colleague Story Musgrave was what we call free-floating. Both of us are attached to the shuttle 
by a very thin stainless steel wire uh, just in case we lose our grip we don't want to get lost in space. So our first job was to replace some of the gyroscopes which had failed and that's uh, still a high failure rate item uh, even to this day. Story actually slid inside the telescope and uh, I would undo the bolts, Story would remove the old unit, hand it to me, I'd hand him the new one, he'd put it in place and then I'd put the bolts back in and, and here we are sliding him out. You have to be very, very careful. Nobody wanted to uh, damage something on the telescope that wasn't already damaged and those are the thermal enclosures which were used to launch the new equipment and then we put the old units back in for their trip back to Earth. This was the most serious problem we had. I'll talk a little bit more about it later where um, Although we successfully changed out the gyros, the doors wouldn't close, and this was a potentially fatal problem for the telescope, which we were able to solve, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, it was the very first task, and the fact that uh, we ran into this big problem, uh, the very first task of the very first day, uh, didn't give us a really good feeling. And then at the end of that day, uh, we rolled up the old solar arrays. They had to be replaced because there was a problem with their stability. They would vibrate after going through a day-night transition. Well, the first one rolled up just fine like an old-fashioned window shade, but the second one, this stiffening rod was buckled, probably due to thermal stress, and we couldn't roll it up. So Tom and Kathy, who were going out to do the uh, spacewalks on the second day, we had two spacewalking teams because there were so many tasks and Story and I went out on days one, three, and five. Tom and Kathy went out on days two and four. And here Kathy basically took the solar array after Tom released the electrical and mechanical connections and just released it into space. And then, of course, it has no rockets on it, so we had to fire our maneuvering rockets to move away from it. And you can see what happens now when the exhaust from our rockets hits the solar array. It, it starts to flap like the wings of some gigantic prehistoric bird. It, it was mesmerizing watching it out there. So here's uh, Kathy holding on to one of the new solar arrays. Uh, and um, Tom was uh, actually doing up the, the bolt to put in the electrical connector. After every spacewalk, we have to replace the batteries, clean out the suits, and then on the third day, Story and I are finally getting ready to put in the new camera, which now will correct Hubble's optics. You saw me doing this in the water tank, and I have to say, it gives you a good feeling when you're actually out in space to feel like you're doing something that you understand because you've done it so many times before in practice. We stowed the old unit over in the side of the shuttle, and here I am pulling out the new wide field camera. It has a protective device over the little mirror at the bottom, which Story removed, and then we installed it. We were prepared for all sorts of problems and contingencies, but fortunately it went in just fine. And uh, that actually ended up taking a lot of the famous pictures that Hubble produced over the first uh, 10 years or so of its operation. And that's the uh, container that we put the old um, wide field camera into to bring it back to Earth. Uh, let's go back to port. There we go. Okay. Believe it or not, much of this video is speeded up by a factor of two or three because we move very slowly when we're out there, but to show it in real time, would be uh, you know, almost too hard to look at. Uh, we had to go up to the very top of the telescope to put in some new magnetometers. Um, the two magnetometers were considered very simple instruments. They would never fail. They weren't designed to be replaced. And they both failed in the first three years. So we had to put new magnetometers on top of the old ones and then change the wiring around, uh, take the wiring off the old ones and put it on the new ones. Now on the fourth spacewalk, here's Kathy holding on to that uh, co-star with the corrective optic mirrors inside it. Notice she can't see where she's going and it's a very tight fit. So Tom is actually inside the telescope helping to guide it in. But it worked uh, and uh, those other instruments were also brought up to full optical capability. 
This is a demonstration of how we actually use the power tools. They really do save a lot of time. And then at the end of each spacewalk, we come back into the airlock and, and again, uh, comment on the tools. Just look at all those tools hanging from Kathy's workstation. And every single one of them has to be on a tether because you don't want your tools floating away in, out into space. And then here we are, you have to, after a uh, spacewalk, you have to clean, disinfect, dry out the inside of the suit. There's no astronaut inside that, by the way. Uh, some people ask me that. Um, I discovered a, a little bit of peeling paint on the magnetometers, and so the uh, mission control had us make these special covers. This was an unplanned activity. And so Story and I, on the fifth and final day of spacewalking, went way up to the top of the telescope again. This day I was free floating, so you can, Story was actually attached to the robotic arm. Again, we, we both have uh, tethers attaching us so that we don't go floating away, but that was certainly a spectacular uh, place to, to be. And uh, finally we were helping, uh, the, the motor to deploy the solar array didn't work properly, so we put it down manually. And, and we basically stayed out uh, while they were getting the telescope ready for deployment the, uh, the following day. Here's the new solar array that we put on uh, being extended and those um, stiffening rods are now covered by aluminum foil for thermal protection. And it all worked. Everything that we had been assigned to do, despite the fact that this was the most complex shuttle mission that NASA had undertaken, and some people had thought that it was actually too complex and that there was too much on our plate, but we managed to get it all done. And so, as you can imagine, we, uh, we felt very, very good. And um, all that was left was now to take the newly refurbished Hubble Space Telescope, which you can see here, and put it into space. Thank <laughs> you.